turn the microphone on. Hey, good morning. It's Friday. That means it's time for Free Coaching Friday right here. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. You guys crack me up. That's pretty funny. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, America. My name is in the UK and all parts of the world. My name is Tom Rigsby. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, the show where we talk about how to start growing and enjoy the benefits of business ownership. Listen, do me a favor. When you get here, do what Joe and Catherine and Jessica and Amanda have done already. Leave a comment, say hi, say good morning. Give an old thumbs up or a like to the video, depending on which uh, venue you're watching. If you happen to be listening on your favorite podcast catcher, go ahead and at some point, Head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com so you can join in the conversation. Hey, Keith, good morning. Um, yeah, about time, Catherine. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah. Well, now see, you could take your phone with you and listen to the show on the phone. Just saying. Hey, uh, all week this week, we've been talking about opportunity. It is Friday, however, and Friday means free coaching Friday, which means you get to decide the content of the show today. I already have one question in the inbox I'm going to tackle, which I think uh, I know the origin for that question, but I won't presume that. Uh, But if you have a question, (laughs) just put it in the comments here. Drop it in the comments. I'll take it on. Question, topic, weather report, doesn't matter. Whatever you want to talk about. Today is your day to drive content. So, without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and hit this question from Keith. How do you remain business-like when dealing with another company that you from whom you've been receiving bad service? At what point do you call it a day and walk away if you have an alternative? Uh, Okay, Catherine, I'll get to that one, too. So... Um, I don't know if Keith might be, <laughs> uh, might have his own uh, motives behind this question or might just be a reflection of my Twitter feed over the last couple of days. I have a particular problem from a particular service provider that provides me very unreliable service. And they have provided unreliable service for years. And it's even a service you guys depend on because that's how you get to see this video and listen to my voice every morning. And uh, over the course of time, I've just uh, kind of ratcheted up my level of dissatisfaction and <laughs> how frequently I share their results. Uh no, it's not your bad. How how frequently I share their poor results. Now, from from Key's questions point of view, though, all right. So that's that's kind of my issue. Always, people are always nicer to you if you're nice to them, right? Just like when I have to call my internet service provider and talk to them, it's not the person's fault that's on the other end of the phone. I very clearly express my frustration with them, but it's not their fault. Be nice to them. They'll be nice to you. The guy that I talked to last helped me out because I was nice to them, right? Now, so first rule of thumb, just be nice. Now, at some point, you have to express your frustration with their lack of service. That's okay. They... They actually want to hear that. Think about this from your perspective. If you're the business owner, do you want to hear what people don't like? Yes, of course you do. Because that tells you exactly what you need to fix. Now, if they, and, and again, think about it from your perspective. If you have a customer, (coughs) if you have a customer that's been telling you over and over and over again, this is what's wrong, fix it. This is what's wrong, fix it. And you don't fix it. What what do you expect them to do? 
I would expect them to go somewhere else. Right? So, you know, in my perspective, you engaged with a particular service provider or, or uh, what do you call them here, a business, for a reason. Assume that your decision-making process was valid. Be nice. Give them an opportunity to resolve it. If they resolve it, great. Everything's fixed. If they don't resolve it, you know, do your best to, to escalate it. Make sure they know, understand how frustrated you are. If they just refuse to fix it, then it's time to move on. In a particular case like mine, I don't have another. Well, I do have another choice. I've actually started suggesting to my current provider that they pay for another provider if they can't do it. Well, we'll see if that works. But then, you know, like for me, I just started being very vocal about um, <laughs> about my dissatisfaction. Keith says that was a very diplomatic answer if I ever thought about running for office. Nope, too much paperwork. Do agree, up to a point, you get better results being polite and businesslike. That's right. So, for example, for me and my speed problem on the Internet, on their page where you test their speed, they got a little link to post the results to Twitter. So I used it. I mean, they were really bad results, but I posted it anyway, and it tagged them automatically. So now everybody gets to see it. All right. So Catherine had a question. I'm going to scroll back up here to get to that question. What is the best way to complete a business plan for a business already going that doesn't have a plan? My question to you would be, why do you want one? I mean, a lot of people think they have to have a business plan. It certainly helps. But when you undertake creating something like a business plan, do it with a particular outcome in mind, as I tell you to do about all things. Do it with a particular outcome in mind. So why do you want one? Or if you're trying to get a loan, then you have a particular audience for that business plan, and you should construct it in a certain way. What goes in it, the best pieces to go in it, um, will vary. Now, if you want a business plan so that you know what you're doing, just because... Yeah, just because you have an LLC doesn't mean you have a business. That's a fact. So what are the three things you need to have a business? We'll use these three fingers. People to serve, a problem to solve, and a profitable solution. Right? If you have those three things, then you have a business. If you take any one of those three away, then you have either a hobby, a passion project, um, you know, something like that. All right. So... In order to do that, right, if you want to put together a plan that's going to help you figure out what your business is and all about and what you should be doing, one-page business plan. That's all you need, one page. Outcomes, goals, uh, strategies, and measures. Those are the four things that need to be on it. Start at the top. What's the outcome? What do you want to create? What's your vision? How will you decide if you're winning or not? Well, that's measures. Outcome is what do you want the business to do for you? That's O. M is measures. How will you decide if you're winning or not? Profitable solution, Catherine. You can have a solution that's not profitable. That doesn't bode well for a successful business. So outcomes, measures. Um, what was the S? Solutions. Outcomes, measures, solutions. The same as, as uh, profitable solution. Uh no. Outcomes, goals, measures, and solutions. So goals, you get the point, right? Have the outcome that you want. What are the goals that tell you whether you are uh, making um, progress towards success? And then the solution, what is it that you are providing? And you can go one step further than that and add a, you know, an avatar description of who you're, you're serving but from a business plan perspective, keep it simple, right? What's the outcome you're trying to create? How are you going to know if you're winning or not? That's it. That's really what you need. Key says, that's tricky for a business that has been running from the beginning of time, doing things this way to do things differently. Nudge rather than revolution. I agree with that. Um. 
I, I, I will caution that thought, though, in that sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's easier to start over because, right, especially if you've been doing something a particular way for a long time, you get this idea that, well, I've already made the decisions that that tell me this is the right way to do it. So that part I don't have to change. And well, this part I don't have to change. Well, that that thing I don't have to change. And so you make assumptions and you kind of skim over those things. And those may be exactly the things that you need to tweak or change in order to um, create an impactful result. So, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you, you know, small changes, especially if you're already having success, you know, you, you're tweaking the knobs and dials. You're not you're not making wholesale changes. But if you are orders of magnitude away from where you want to be, then you have to make orders of magnitude changes. Keep doing what you've always done. And keep getting what you've always gotten. Look at you guys. Made me run over 10 minutes today. I enjoyed this today, though. Keep those questions coming. You can send them to me. Email them to me, Tom at TomRigsby.com. Put them as a message on the Tom Rigsby Coaching Facebook page. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for being here. And if and only if you found value in today's content, I would appreciate if you'd share it out with your network. Help other people find our little secret conversation that goes on every weekday morning. 7 a.m. Central Time here in the States. You guys have a fantastic weekend. I will be back again on Monday with another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Take care.